hey, look at all these people coming to your site. You're not grabbing their email address. What are you doing? You have to talk to these people, right? And you spend the time to start building out email sequences, having email captures. Maybe you have a quiz funnel, something John's gonna be talking about probably today as we're recording this here at the live event. Welcome to the Dropship Podcast, where you'll learn how to build and grow a high-ticket dropshipping business and hear stories from successful e-commerce entrepreneurs. Let's kick this thing off. Hey, welcome to the Dropship Podcast. Last podcast, we talked about how long does it take to be profitable. And this question comes from John Grant, and it's how do we increase profitability. So uh, John actually is one of our partners and we've helped him with this. So this podcast will be timely there. And in that last podcast, we talked about how breaking even right away is actually a really good thing. And then slowly but surely you will tick up that profitability mark. And I kind of want to talk about why that is. Why do we go through that journey and why isn't it like super profitable in the beginning? And then how do we increase profitability as we go? And I think um, there are a lot of levers you can pull along the way, but maybe you want to touch on John. Why, why are you not pro like, as you, you know, you start break even, why is it like slowly coming together? Is it because we're only running ads? Is that the main reason that at, at the beginning, we're just paying to acquire all this traffic? Yeah, I, I mean, I think so. That That's a, that's a large part of it. Uh, in the beginning, you are solely reliant on paid traffic. You know, I mean, you can't have organic traffic that you're not paying directly for the day you open your site. Uh, so we, we run ads and ads obviously have a cost. And I think, you're still getting a lot of things right in your business. Like you're still working out like what's your offer? What's the best way to sell my products? What search terms are my products actually going to sell off? Like my ad targeting. There's a lot of like just little optimizations that you kind of go through probably in your first few months, to be honest, at least. I mean, it's an ongoing process, but there, you, you jump some big gaps early on. Um, and, you know, Things aren't always exactly the way they need to be the day you open your site and you, you make those improvements over time. Um, and so your, your profitability gets better as a result of that. Um, and so, you know, it, you know, your business becomes more trustworthy. You know, the day you open, nobody's seen or heard, heard of your business before. Uh, you know what I mean? Your customer service gets better. Uh, you know, you put in better practices to sell more products to people when they call in. Um, you're going to start doing things like remarketing and retargeting and email marketing. So over time, all of these things kind of start contributing together. And I think your profitability in a lot, a lot of the time, you know, naturally can go up. Um, uh, and, and so, but there are a lot of options, I think, available to you to, uh, you know, boost your profitability. Um, which is which is a good thing, you know. It's not like you're going to get into that scenario and be like, "Oh, I'm stuck for ideas on what to do here." Um, sometimes it's, it can be a case of there's too many things to do and I don't know where to start. Realistically, um, but uh, you know, to me, I think yeah, there's 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 quite a few ways. I, look, obviously, <laughs> there's so many there's so many you're getting caught up here. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting caught up here. Like, where do you even start this conversation? Yeah, uh, I'm just, I'd probably I'm just... go back to the beginning. Like, I, I think you you kind of walk through it. Right now, we're at our Dropship Breakthrough Live event in Salt Lake City, and we'd like to see you at our next live events next year. To do that, to get there, you need to start building and launching your own high-ticket dropshipping business. And in celebration of our current live event, we've got a special promotion running now on Dropship Breakthrough Membership, where you can come and learn how to build, launch, and grow a high-ticket dropshipping business with the support of myself and Ben and our huge community of successful high-ticket dropshippers. So head to dropshipbreakthrough.com forward slash SLC to find one of our best deals of the year where you can get in, you can start building your own high ticket dropshipping business today. And hopefully we'll see you next year at our next live event. If you think about the business, what are you doing? You're running Google shopping ads and you're running exact terms, brand name, product name. You're trying to get people to the product page, right? Uh, you're probably going to get a sale or two from that. What's the next step? You got to work on your offer. You need to make sure that your offer is as good as the marketplace and work on your, you're getting the right traffic to the right pages. Now you work on your offer, you convert to more people, uh, you drive people to phone calls, like that's kind of the next step of the puzzle, right? So then you make a few more sales. And if you make a few more sales on a uh, similar ad spend, now you've somehow, you know, you've crossed that profitability threshold, right? From there, you still have this giant bucket of traffic that has like, it's, there's holes everywhere in it, right? These people are coming once on a brand name, product name, 
They're not converting. You're pissed because you're like, they searched this. Why aren't they buying? Well, most people don't buy on first visit, right? And so then you circle back to our course where you work through the remarketing module. Now, when somebody comes to your site and they go back to Google and search something else, or they go to a blog, or they go to Facebook or Instagram, they're seeing your ad and going, oh yeah, I did have that in my cart. And then, you know, Sally started throwing up or, or whatever. I had to put the kids to bed and I kind of forgot about it or I fell asleep or whatever happened. That might bring some more people back, right? So once you can bring back a few of those people at a reduced cost because you're remarketing, now your profitability sneaks up a little bit more, right? At that point, John's barking at you saying, hey, look at all these people coming to your site. You're not grabbing their email address. What are you doing? You have to talk to these people, right? And you spend the time to start building out email sequences, having email captures. Maybe you have a quiz funnel, something John's going to be talking about probably today as we're recording this here at the live event. And so... At that point, now you're getting more traffic in uh, or the same traffic in, but you're converting more of those people by getting them on your email sequence, by remarketing to them, by sending them through a quiz and make sure they know what they want, by sending people to phone calls. Uh, and this process just continues as you iterate and iterate and iterate along making sure that you have no holes in your buckets. And then you start getting to that place of like, what do I do now, right? Do I focus on SEO to drive more uh, free traffic, right? To increase that traffic part of the equation or do I expand my ads to hit more top of the funnel keywords so that I can work them through that email marketing, through that quiz? Um, there's probably even more options than that. But I think those first few steps are pretty critical from taking you to from breaking even to 5% to 10%, maybe even getting to that 15% threshold before then you can really start maximizing some of the levers. But you know, to your point, John, there's only three ways to grow a business. And so you kind of have to think through that lens. Which one am I focusing on? Am I getting more customers? Am I making that customer worth more? Or am I selling more to the current customers that I have? Uh, in the beginning, it's just, you got to get more customers and you have to mm. make sure that you're, um, my friend George always said, when 100 people come to your site, 100 people have raised their hand and said, I'm interested in what you're selling. And likely you're converting one of those. So how are you letting those 99 other people just walk away and not get served by you? You need to focus on that, right? Through remarketing, through email marketing, things like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think we talk a lot about on, on the show the, the three main ways that you can grow a business. Um, and, I, and I think there is really, you know, there are so many different things you can do to increase your profitability. And, and the answer is, is a little bit different when you're at the start of the journey to if you're in the case of like John, I think who asked the question who's done, you know, uh, multiple millions in revenue through his store, right? That there's levels to this question, I think. But I think you can kind of boil it down into how to increase your profitability into, into three kind of buckets. The first one is to increase your conversion rate, right? The second one is to get a better margin from your suppliers. Uh, and I think the third one that I think we see a lot of people doing is to increase your average order value right through things like bundles upsells um, because the, the 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 cool thing with high ticket dropshipping and what you see uh, often if you went like i dive into people's reports and analytics all the time i, I love to do that um and you'll see people's profitability they're like i don't know why i'm i'm really profitable this month but i'm not so profitable the next month and then the month after that i'm my profitability is better and when you look at it are they doing anything different the only thing they did different was they sold different products each month. So with one of these businesses, like you're going to have some products which are like $2,000 and have a 25% net gross margin. And you're going to have some products that are like 50, that are like $5,000 and have, you know, a 25% margin. Now it seems, sounds like the same margin in percentage terms, but when you look at the dollars, which is actually what you look at when you look at your profitability, you're looking at a dollar figure. You're not looking at percentages. Percentages are pointless in this conversation, right? It's all about the dollar term number. If you sell more of those $5,000 products at 25% margin, your profitability is going to be way higher than the lower ticket products. And so, you know, finding ways that you can focus on the products that actually um, produce more profit for you or just creating products like bundles and things that are more profitable uh, is a really good way to do it. Um, you talked a lot about increasing your conversion rate. And I think in the beginning, that's probably mainly like fixing the leaky bucket and all of that. That's kind of where your focus is very heavily if you're at the start of the journey. Um, but as your business gets bigger, you actually exhaust a lot of those options. Right? So if you, as your business grows, you've got to look at other opportunities. Can I buy products? 
on in bulk? Can I private label products uh, to get a better margin? Uh, can you go to your suppliers and ask for a better margin? Yes, you can. You always can uh, if you think it's warranted. If, you, if you've done the numbers on a product and the profitability is not great, and as a result, you don't want to sell it so much, can you go to your suppliers and say, hey, man, this is what the numbers look like. We really want to push your products harder. But to do that, we need to spend more, you know, on marketing, on, you know, whatever it might be. And so we'd like to talk about increasing this margin so that we can push, push harder on your products because we really like them. Um, you can have that conversation. You can actually have it earlier than you think. You can't have it the day you sign up with a supplier because there is no relationship at that point and that they have no reason to give you a better margin. You've essentially done nothing for them at that point. You're not in a position where you have any power in the relationship. But once you've started making some sales, you know, if once again, if the numbers aren't stacking up particularly well, which sometimes they don't, you can start having that conversation pretty early on. Like you don't have to wait till you've sold, you know, millions of dollars for them or something like that. You can do it much earlier on, I think. Um, and that, that's a very real way that you can get an extra, you know, 5%, uh, sometimes more uh, in the relationship. And once you've made some sales and the supplier can look at you and go, hey, yeah, this person's serious. Um, I can see the value here in this relationship um, and deepening that then, you know, not always, but a lot of the time you'll get some, you know, a bit of uh, assistance from them in that way. I love the point you touched on there of, uh, you know, bundles is one of my favorite things that you can touch on, but really focusing on the right products. I think I've, I've, I've consulted with a lot of people. We've got some partners where this has happened and students where this has happened, where they've, I don't want to say they struck gold, but you know, often there's an 80, 20 to your products, right? 20% of your products will bring 80% of your revenue yeah. and they'll, they'll hone in and be like, man, I sell a ton of these products. And then we'll look and be like, you, you don't really make any money selling these products, right? Like you, you sell a ton of them. Uh, hmm. And you're like, how do I increase profitability? And sometimes there's not a lever that you can pull other than reaching out to your supplier and asking for better margins. And as you look through, so we'll take their, the, you know, the spreadsheet, we give away a spreadsheet in the course here for your bookkeeping. I use one that's very similar as well. And you can take that and again, sort the columns, change, you know, green to red, uh, you know, green above whatever, 20% and, and red below 5%. And like you said, use dollar amounts too to do this. And you'll find out, you'll be like, well, that, pro that product I sell a ton of, I don't make any money. And these other products, I make a ton of money, um, but you'll find that like, again, we tell you this game's between your ears. You'll find that when that shows up, you'll be like, oh, I can't turn off the ads to this product. It's hmm. my best selling product, even though it makes you no money, right? And it's hard for your ego to go from 100K revenue in a month and making, you know, $5,000 to go back down to 60,000, but you made $10,000. And it's totally possible to do that. Mm -hmm. You just have to like, you know, focus where you want to focus. Uh, but I would encourage you as well, reach out to your suppliers. And bundles have been huge for me in the past, John. Uh, I don't think all products set up super well for, for enormous bundles. They should certainly yeah, have some sure. things that go with them. But most of the time you you sell a product and the consumer is buying your product and then probably buying two or three other things. And it might not be the mm. accessories for your product like you're thinking. It might just be something else they need. Um, you know, if you sold a, a big exercise bike, um, they're probably buying a mat from somewhere to put on their carpet in their basement before they set it down, right? Um, you know, pellet grills, I, I gave away a lot of uh, grill covers. That was an easy one in the golf simulator space. It, there was all sorts of products like ball holders and, and you know, uh, the mats on which they hit, the the projector covers, uh, the landing pads. There was all sorts of... We ended up like private labeling gaming computers by the time I left the company. And so I think there's an opportunity for you to really think through the who, what is the problem they're trying to solve? And, and can you answer some of those other parts of the equation and really make a bundle that one, you know, you make more money on and two helps your customer far, far more. And three makes your offer irresistible in the marketplace because you're truly solving that problem. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, that those are all great ideas. And, and, and this is where talking to your customer also comes into the equation. Like if you do like one thing we say people should do in, in our program is like, particularly in the beginning of your business is call every customer after they've received their order and have a chat with them. Do like a post sales support kind of call. And you, you could do this yourself as the business owner. I think that's a good idea in the beginning because you're going to get to know your customer much better. Um, but further down the track, you can get you know, if you've got a customer service employee, you can get them to do it for you. Um, and, you know, follow up with them and see, like, you can ask them, like, you know, do you need anything else? Is there anything else we can help you with? 
Um, you know, is, is there anything else that you're looking to get that kind of fits in the, whatever this space is that you occupy as a business, whatever your niche is? Uh, because you, you mean your customers are going to tell you and give you insight into like, if you just ask them and have an open mind about it, um, you're going to start to learn ways that you could serve them. Um, you, you might find out that, oh, you know, you they've bought, I'm, I'm just thinking about, you know, one of our businesses um, that we're partners on and, you know, they buy one product and then they come back three or four months later and they buy two or three more of the same product because they bought the first one to test it out and they have a use case for more. Well, you know, if you know that that's the behavior, then what you should be building into your marketing system is a way to make sure that you retain that person that person's attention until they're ready to buy two or three more and they don't end up going to another business to buy those other two or three more. You know what I mean? Like you would want to keep following up with that person in multiple ways to make sure that you end up closing them. And every time you have a customer that buys one, you want to work out, can I find out who's also looking to acquire more down the track and put them into like a leads list and keep following up with them and doing that, that next order for two or three more is going to be way more profitable from the first one because you don't have to pay to acquire that customer again. So, you know, identifying opportunities where you can, in your niche, and the ways you do this vary a lot, like sell a second and a third time to the same customer, like, uh, which is, you know, one of the three main ways that you grow any business is, is massive for profitability because once you, you only pay to acquire a customer once, which in a high ticket dropshipping business is often your biggest overhead is the, is the cost of acquisition of a customer, but you only have to do that once. Once somebody's on your customer list, you've got their contact details, you've got their phone number, you've got their email address. You, they don't have to click on your ads ever again for you to sell them something else. So working out that piece of the puzzle, and I think particularly for a more advanced business, that's a big one, right? Because you've probably tightened up your conversion rate about as much as it's gonna get really on your site. Your offer's probably dialed in, because those are things you do earlier in the piece. But what I see a lot of people who kind of get to like 1 million in revenue or 2 million in revenue or 3 million in revenue is they don't have any back end really worked out. They don't have any processes or systems around building out the second or the third sale to the same customer. Um, and I think, I think you can really there add, if you're at that level, you can add like, you know, 10, 20,000 a month profit potentially just by doing, by working that out. And that's a big jump. We did an episode on this. It was called Do the Work, Call Every Customer. It was something we recorded after last year's live yeah. event. Uh, yeah. It is episode 215. So we'll put a, a link in the show notes to episode 215, or you can find it again. Do the Work, Call Every Customer is the name of the show. Uh, John kind of walks through, hey, what are some questions? Yeah, there you go. Look at that. John's wearing the shirt. <laughs> you can look at uh, or listen to some of the questions John tells you to ask every customer. Honestly, that was eye-opening for me when you said that mm. stuff. Um, but I do think there's a framework for this. You know, I kind of went through it in the beginning of the steps you take to get your business to you know a good profitability point and then you kind of touched on this i think there's another step of like let's start ordering in bulk send them to a 3pl we have one here in minnesota that i recommend to everybody jesse's awesome a ship mn mm -hmm. or mnship.com one of the two whichever one's a 3pl site um they're awesome i i have products there I, we also have a warehouse here i think john has a warehouse in australia you could probably talk both of us into having a, a product or two in, in our warehouse for you if you wanted to uh certainly partners if you want that let us know we got that for you and um and then i think the next place is private labeling, right? Like you should look into mm. private labeling pretty fast. And I think the opportunities are everywhere. You might not see it right away, but then you'll start seeing, wow, that product sure looks like product from this vendor I carry. It just has a different sticker on it. You can do the same thing, right? Um, beyond that, you could launch your own product that's even better than what's in the marketplace. It's, it's not as hard as you think it would be. Um, or um, we've had Brian Angel on the podcast and we're doing, we're talking about this with one of our current partners is you can go acquire one of the brands you sell. Um, it's not out of the realm uh, of possibilities. You don't need money to acquire a business. Uh, Cody Sanchez is, talks about this very frequently on the internet. You probably ran into her. And so can you find one of your suppliers that's ready to move on? Uh, and you're like, man, I really like your product. I really like what you're doing and, and go acquire that brand. And now you have a brand as well as a traffic source uh, on which you can feature said brand. So I think there's a limitless set of possibilities. Um, but you have to start at the beginning, right? You have to start by driving that traffic directly from Google shopping ads to a product page convert those people and start learning all the steps along the way. 
it's the beauty of our course. I'll, I'll, I'll tout it. There, no one has a dropshipping course as good as ours. No one has as much content as we have. No one has the experience that John and I have. Uh, and everything that we've learned over 10 years is inside of Dropship Breakthrough, including a lot of this stuff. If you can't find it in the course, you can definitely find it in an interview on this podcast. We're at you know, 330 episodes as this one comes out. And so there's just so much information out there that uh, you know, if you can't find it, uh, I'd be shocked at this point. I, I feel like we've we've done everything we can to get that information out there. So if you still have questions, put them in the comments below. We'd love to answer your questions on how to increase profitability or what some of this stuff is look like. And uh, definitely go check out episode 215, uh, Call Every Customer. Thanks for listening to the Dropship Podcast. You can find all the show notes for this episode at dropshippodcast.com. And if you're ready to take the next step in your dropshipping journey, we invite you to join us inside Dropship Breakthrough, where John and I will walk you through step-by-step -step in starting your own high-ticket dropshipping e-commerce business. But that's not all. Dropship Breakthrough will also teach you everything you'll need to know to grow your business and take it to the next level. So head over to dropshipbreakthrough.com and sign up for our free training that will help you take the first steps towards building and growing your own profitable high-ticket dropshipping business.